Welcome to Nevertheless, a show dedicated to organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. Today, you will discover how to discern your essence and live powerful. Hi guys, welcome to Nevertheless, a show for organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. My name is Bidemi Makmodi. It is always, always, always a pleasure to bring this show your way. Last week, we took a look at how to recover from setbacks. And I do hope um, you found the show useful and you're on your way out of whatever setback you found yourself. Um, In the week leading up to today, a lot has happened. And one of the things that happened on the on a broad scale or on a larger than larger than nevertheless stage is um the comment that was um credited to the British Prime Minister David Cameron who called Nigerians fantastically corrupt people and um when I heard because I'm usually not political like that I just thought about it and I'm like hmm Okay, um, he could call us whatever he wants to call us, but the most important thing is what do we call ourselves? But I was so excited because that's, you know, that's in a committee of nations or in an event like the one they were at was disrespectful to say the least to my own president. And so my, my interest was more in what did my president say in return more than what he said. And I so loved what President Muhammad Buhari replied when he was um, interviewed and someone asked him if he was going to demand for an apology from the Prime Minister. And um, I'm paraphrasing his words now, but he said something like, of what use is an apology? I don't want an apology. All I ask is that they should repatriate our stolen funds back to us. And that, in my opinion, is a great recovery from a setback because that's the statement first accredited to the um, prime minister was it didn't portray nigerians in the best of light but the comeback if you ask me was very powerful so when we're talking about recovering from setbacks that's how powerfully you want to recover when someone puts you down however today our focus is not on how to um, recover from setbacks although if you have your questions you can send them in our focus will be on something slightly more exciting for those of us who are dreamers and entrepreneurs. When I come back, I'll let you know what it is we're talking about. So this is a great time to quickly call your friends and your neighbors to come sit around your phone or your laptop or your um, whatever device you're using to listen to this for some great learning time on the Nevertheless Show. I'll be right back. Introducing Dukia Radio, a new online purpose and leadership talk radio for the family. Follow us on Twitter at Dukia Radio and like our Facebook page, Dukia Radio. Dukia Radio, giving life full expression. Come in soon. I'm back and the show still is nevertheless I said that when I come back I'll be talking to you what it is that we're going to be talking about today so to be able to tell you why we're talking about this last week I didn't know whether it was one of my tweets or whether I was in the show that we had I made an allusion to four streams of income that as an entrepreneur or as a dreamer once you identify your dominant gift that God is set it up in such a way that that one gift can bless your life in four different ways and what's the best way for your life to be blessed and to make money with your gift that's one of the best ways most of us think so i'm saying that if your gift is cooking then the way god has set it up you should be able to earn money from four different ways in four different ways out of cooking 
And I have been told that that isn't possible. I've been told that um, that isn't working for some people. But I'd like to prove it to you today that you can take one gift and do four different things with it that people will pay you for. So where am I getting my theory from? I want to begin by taking you to Genesis chapter 1. If you go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and you read verse 28, the Bible says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the earth and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. That's what the Bible says in Genesis 1.28. However, the part of Genesis 1.28 that I want to focus on is a part that says be fruitful and multiply. Now, even this afternoon, I was um, in a coaching session with someone and I was saying to the person that um, fruitfulness is the hardest part, part of this mandate because according to my book, and that's what I believe in my book, Destiny Navigational Application DNA. I believe that God gave every one of us the mandate, every man that he's created, the mandate to produce, to multiply, to subdue, to dominate, and to replenish. So whatever gift you've been given is so that the end product of the gift that you've been given is for you to replenish the earth so that you can rule in the place of God because we're ambassadors of God on the earth. So given that mandate, I'm saying that God called man and said, produce. But because God is the most strategic person that I know, he didn't stop with production. He said, okay, when you produce, then you must also multiply that which you produce. So to look at um, using your gift to, to set up four streams of income, how do you go? The first thing that you're supposed to do is to identify your gift your dominant gift and when i talk about dominant gifts i usually talk about the the ones that you the that that one gift that you use the most easily that comes that is most fluid to you to use the gift that other people may be struggling with to use but with you it just comes easy in my case i'm sure you know by now i've talked about it several times before my gift is an ability to use words so when you begin with words, you know, it looks like it's just words. And as a matter of fact, when I started that, people said to me, it's just words. What can you do with words? But looking from where I sit down, looking at all that we have done, I then say that you can do so much with words. So if you want to take your one gift and ultimately Propose it in four different ways so that you can, it can fetch you income in four different ways. The, the thing that I call four streams of income. You want to make sure that you take that gift that you can use on more than one platform. So for the gift of words, I do words on radio. I do words on this show. I do words in physical teachings, teaching events. I use words, words in coaching. I've been blessed to be able to write a song. I do poetry with words. I train in corporate arenas using words. What am I saying? If I could take each of these different platforms or arenas, arenas that I use my gift of words. Oh, by the way, I write. So I've authored books. I've published magazines using the same gift of words. The trick is how the trick is how do you take that gift and in the many manifestations that you use it and begin to streamline it into products and services that people require. So when I say that you can take one gift and make it into four streams of income, I'm not just talking. If you follow me to Genesis chapter 2 beginning from verse 10, I'll show you something. In Genesis chapter 2 from verse 10, it says, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pishon, that is, that is, that is it which compassed the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedlium and the onyx tree stone. 
and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hedekal. And that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. In verse 15, the Bible says, And the Lord God took man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now what has happened is, out of one garden of Eden flowed four different rivers. The names again, the first river is Pishon. And Pishon means to spring out or to overflow. The second stream or river is known as Gihon. Gihon means to burst forth. The third river is Hedekal. Hedekal means rapid, quick and sharp. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And Euphrates means fruitful, breakthrough and abound. Now, when you take take a look at this, Eden was is a representative of the best form or the best place that God has put man. And when you take a look at your gift that God has given you to impact the earth and replenish it, you are in your best state when you use your gift. And if you look at your Bible in Genesis, out of this garden of Eden flowed these four rivers. So if the place where you use your gift is your best state, then it also means that there is something else that can come forth from you beyond what it is that you are looking at right now. And if we stand on this this scripture in Genesis chapter 2, you'll find that you can take that one gift. It was that one garden. There was one river that was flowing in the garden, but the river split into four. And I'm saying that you can use this as a principle on which to begin to think and to strategize and to just examine the things you're, you are doing and begin to split them into four different ways and means of earning income. So again, remember that I am a factual or I am, and my gift is words. And the first thing I did with my gift of words was to be able to um, publish the magazine Effectua. That was where we started from. But from publishing Effectua, we've gone on to do so many other things. That same one gift of words is the reason why we now are a publishing company for other people. That same one gift of words is the reason why you are listening to this podcast today. So I already have three streams. I have Effectua. I have the third party publishing. I have um, the, the show that I'm doing now, the things that I do, the speaking engagements that I do, the coaching that I do. Then I have this same gift that I use in ministry. I can take to the corporate settings and use them. So as a matter of fact, if I was... Um, if I took the time to bottle or distill my gift into f- services, I should be able to find at least five different services or products that people can pay for out of my gift of words. And what I'm trying to say is that this is not peculiar to me. This is what happens to everyone. And so I say you spring out. That um, a patient is spring out. Gihon is busting forth. Hedekal is rapidity. Euphrates is fruitful. Look at those words again. Spring forth or overflow. So we have overflow. We have busting forth. We have rapid. And we have fruitful. Whenever God gives you a river. If you remember in John chapter 4. I believe it is verse 24. It talks about rivers of living waters. Flowing out of our belly. The thing that flows out of you the most easily. The thing that people identify with. That you do. Is usually your river. Now yesterday I had. um, A friend and a brother. Come talk to me about a new product that we are putting on. I've been talking about Purpose University. So I had him come and talk to me about social media presence and how it is that we will put together that product so that you can take advantage of it. And in in that place where we were having that conversation, I started to say to him that this was his first stream of income from the gift or his ability to write. 
and he was looking at me and eventually he got it because he did some fantastic write up on it on Facebook but here's the point that I'm trying to make you cannot have that one gift and decide that that is all that you have one gift is the way I usually say it is that one gift is more than enough to make you wealthy one gift is more than enough for a lifetime because if you take that one gift and you sit with it and you begin to look for the specific ways where that one gift will be useful to other people you'll be amazed how much your one gift will can do and will do so it doesn't make sense when people say oh it's just that one gift i can't do much with it i say that it's because you have not examined your gift properly the question now is okay if i can take one gift and use it in four different ways and earn in four different ways how do i do that that's a question i'd like to answer when i return please don't go away frustrated and tired of life do you feel trapped in life's maze and don't seem to find your way or are you passionate about your purpose and destiny i want to find out more then get a copy of dna dna destiny navigational application is a book written by bdemi mac modi where she coaches you to distill the answer to the cry of purpose mandate and significance she teaches you how to descend your essence discover your god-given mandate deploy power and demonstrate dominion. Get a Get copy, a copy of, of Destiny, Destiny Navigational Navigation Application from any bookstore near you or call 234-813-360-2883 or send an email to bdemi at bdemimacmodi.com to place your order now. Welcome back. So what have you learned so far? We're still looking at how to use your gift or purpose or deploy your gift into four streams of income. And we're in an economy worldwide right now that every single one of us needs and ought to, ought to have a second stream of income. It's no longer enough to have that one job and stick with it and think that it is enough to pick up the bills and do other things that you need to do. And most people who know me, when I said to my colleague that I wanted to talk about streams of income today, he said to me, I've never heard you talk about money. Never. And I'm like, yes, but the tides and the seasons are changing and we need to begin to be comfortable to talk about money. However, I want to begin from the point of view that, okay, I have a gift and that gift is enough to take me to wherever it is I want to go. If as long as I know how to utilize it. So if you ask me the question, how do I take my gifts and purpose in four different directions and call them four streams? The first thing is to first produce by your gifts. First produce by your gifts. First produce by your gifts. A lot of people have gifts, but they are not producing anything with it. And when I say they are not producing anything with it, I don't mean that they are not using it. I mean that it's not been distilled into a, a service. It's not been distilled into a product. And if it's not been distilled into a service or a product, then how are you going to earn by it? So you can't tell me that you have a great voice, you can sing. But the only place you sing is in the shower. The only time people would... um relate with what it is that you know how to do and want to pay for it is when you showcase it however in showcasing in being able to produce you must first have prepared so the question is you say it's your gifts and it's your dominant gifts how much more have you invested in taking it from the level it is now to the level that people will be willing to pay for so you need to prepare your gifts or transition your gift from a gift into a skill and then use it to produce whatever it is that you it's been optimized to produce once you begin to produce you are one step ahead of the game the second thing that you need to do is to make others aware make others aware that you have a product or a service in place this is not 
just about advertising this is beyond advertising i say to people that if you have a product or a service Especially when you are, your gift, you produce services by your gift. I usually encourage people to volunteer. When you have a gift that can, that renders service and you don't know how to market it, the best and first thing to do is to volunteer. Go to places where you know that your, your gift is required or your service is required and approach them and promise and just commit to use it for free. Out of volunteering, I have found out nine, found out nine times out of ten that people begin to talk to you about it. And before you know what is happening, referrals will come. So produce by your gift, that is transition your gift from a, from your gift from a gift into a skill which means you may have to invest in trainings there's so many things you can do to get better you may have to take lessons you might have to practice and practice but make sure it's no longer it doesn't remain a gift or a potential that it becomes a skill then take that skill and distill it into a service or a product then take that product and announce it to those who need it this morning at the discipleship class i was telling my class that one of the mistakes we make is we market to people who are not hungry it doesn't make sense to try and sell to someone who isn't hungry so the next thing you want to do is okay people are now aware that i do this number three are these people hungry enough are they hungry enough does this what that means is does this gift or this skill or this service or this product satisfy a yearning does it satisfy a yearning in another person because if it satisfies a yearning in another i promise you they will be willing to pay for it that's where you start from so let's take this uh, go through the steps again one identify what your dominant gift is to produce by that gift and in being able to produce you must have prepared your gift you must have enhanced it you must have grown it then when you produce out of by that gift that is you have now have a clearly defined service or product by your gift then you need to let people know that you do this and i said that it's not about complimentary cards it's not about billboards how about you just volunteer your services around the people that you already know? You don't need to walk up to strangers yet. Just even in your circle of influence, your 250, begin to talk to them about what it is that you do. And I said in talking to people, be sure that you identify those who, who are hungry for what it is that you have. Automatically, if they are hungry for what you have, they will pay for it. When you get to the point that people are paying you for your service, then you have started to produce. But if you look at Genesis chapter 1, from that verse 28 that we read, production is, was not enough for God. He said be fruitful, which I, 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 I liken to production. It was not enough for God. He, 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 he went a step further and he said, and multiply. What is multiplication? Multiplication is taking that little thing that you have and to use, um, Ron Connelly's word, make grand. Take one simple thing or one little thing that you're doing and make it grand. And I'm saying that four streams of income is the ability to take one thing that you're producing and multiply it in different directions. So when we talk about multiplying, remember that is one gift. So for instance, you your gift is you hate to see dirt. You hate to see dirt. You hate to see people dressed up with stains in their clothing. You like to take care of fabrics. You like the feel of and the smell of clean, freshly laundered fabrics. And over time you have trained, you've learned about the different cares for different cares for fabric and you now have a laundry service so that's one major stream of income because here's the thing hungry people will walk in through your door 
People are wearing clothes daily. People are having to launder clothes daily. And yes, people may not bring every single thing to wear to, they wear to you to launder. But when it is delicate, when they need some professional touch, they'll bring it to you. So you're already earning. You're producing and you are earning by the gift of laundry or the gift that gift of not being able to withstand debt or the gift or the uh, um how will i put this the the the, the, the yes the excitement or the passion to make sure that people dress in clean clothes you already making money but how do you now take this and diversify or project it or deploy it into four different streams like we find in the bible one you can take that gift of laundry and decide to for instance train others in the laundry business so what this means is you will go a step higher to learn how to be a trainer and a trainer's trainer so you become that person the go-to person to teach other people who want to start a laundry business how to do the laundry business you go beyond doing the work to doing the business of what it is that you do what this means is you you will go the extra mile one you will not feel um threatened that you are Helping other people start the same business that you are doing because you recognize that this is a stream of income. So now you want your one gift has, is now producing you income in two ways. The third, the third stream of income can be that because I've actually been to, um, um, laundry service providers who also mend clothes that have issues. So you take your dress to the dry cleaners or uh, the laundry service providers and they notice that there is a tear or there is a rip somewhere. They have a tailor stationed or a dressmaker or whatever stationed right inside their premises. So they make you pay to have that dress mended. Still one building still that one expense of or running cost of electricity water that they have they are now training people and they are now mending clothes here's the thing if you want to train someone in how to do laundry you don't take them to a bakery so you don't need additional space you do it right where you are so you are your overhead is not increasing but your income is increasing so you begin to mend clothes but i also know a particular dress um, laundry service that i use in the first stack area in lagos that not only men's clothes they mend clothes they can actually take outfit sizes bigger and reduce them so when i find a dress that i really like but it's a size bigger than what i normally wear I buy it anyway because I really like it. And when I come, I don't go to the regular tailors outside. I take it to them. They charge me for it. But when they finish sizing down this dress, it usually fits perfectly like it was when I bought it if it was my right size. So this person has taken the gift of making clothes, or or, or, sorry, of washing clothes and keeping them clean. He's transitioned to training people. He's moved from training to mending. And now he's actually sizing down, going beyond just mending a rip to making sure that an entire outfit can be redone so that their customers can wear. That is four in streams of income already from the same gift. Someone says, I love to sing. So I say, okay, join the choir or join a band or something. Some that there you you get constant practice, and then maybe you are paid some stipend. Then the better your voice gets, you can become begin to do backup for major singers. From there, you can begin to do studio voiceovers for other people's projects. And before you know what is happening, if you paid attention to your own voice training, you can actually become a voice trainer as well. The same gift for different ways to use it. What am I saying today? I'm saying that we can't sit here and say, oh, it's only this one thing I do. That's why I'm not able to earn enough money. I'm saying that you can take that one thing that you do and you can purpose it according to what the people around you need and they will pay you for it. 
when my coach spoke to us long time ago about Genesis chapter 2 she summed Genesis chapter 2 from verse 10 to 15 in this statement and I want to share it with you she said um, overflow is a rapid fruitfulness and an overflow is a rap- is rapid fruitfulness bursting forth with increase rapid fruitfulness bursting forth with increase all of us want to be able to make additional money in the kind of economy that we are but what i'm trying to bring to your thought today is you don't need another gift when i tell people that one gift is enough for a lifetime they think maybe i don't want them to do more i'm living my life by one gift and if i sit with you and i tell you what my shadow is from monday through sunday i was sharing my shadow with someone yesterday and he took one look at me and he said i can never live your life but the thing is i'm not doing anything else i'm not into um merchandising i'm not into poetry i'm not into anything that does not involve my greatest gift and ability to use words but i am so overwhelmed with the number of things i have to do on a weekly basis just because i have stepped up to the plate to use my gift of words friends what am i saying today i'm saying that no matter what it is that you do god is so thoughtful of us and so mindful of us that he went ahead and ensured that he made it possible for each one thing that we do to be able to yield earnings in four different ways the question is are you using it right because nobody will pay for mediocre so if you say this is your gift how much have you invested in making sure it's better and it becomes a skill and if this is a skill are you marketing to the right people are they hungry enough and if you're marketing to the right people when someone walks into you in into where you are and asks you for another version of the use of your gift do, are you quick to say to them go oh, no i don't um offer this service or do you ask them to sit down and you think it through and ask them to give you a day or two to come back to them with a plan on how to solve their problem you earn money or you increase your earnings when you increase the number of problems that you solve so if from washing clothes you go to mending and you go to actual making of those clothes and you go to training all around the same industry you are solving problems for different groups of people within your industry who need your services and they are bound to pay that's why i said that you can take one gift and optimize it in four different directions for earning that's what in my opinion is streams of income and it is amazing that what we think is an economic term was first found in the bible before i go i want to encourage you to take two steps back and begin to take a very critical look at your gifts or what you're producing right now and begin to ask yourself how else can i do it so that it can earn me more don't forget to look out for purpose university emails and test messaging and things like that will soon be coming your way to tell you the steps to take so that you can enjoy the benefits of purpose university however before that happens remember that that it is one gift does not mean that it has to be deployed in just one direction you can take that one gift and use it in four ways so get cracking find the four different ways you can use your gift and begin to earn till next week and i come your way again don't forget that when you discover purpose you live a powerful life god bless you thank you for listening to nevertheless for more information and resources call 0813-360-2883 or send an email to bdemi at bdemimacmodi.com 
Don't forget that when you discover your purpose, you will live powerfully.